Hey everybody, welcome to Sideshow Live! Yeah! All right, I'll clap, I'll do it too. My name is Jeff May and with me is my co-host Amy. Amy, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm, hey I'm doing great! Oh, I love when I get to work with Amy. We have a super fun show today. First up, Amy and Paul from the Comics Hall. Not that Amy, different Amy just as great. They have put together the top five comic book news stories from February. Then we will be chatting with sideshow painter Bernardo Escaval about his work and process. So I'm really excited to have Bernie on there. Now, before we get started, be sure to enter the March newsletter giveaway for a chance to win the Magneto exclusive six scale figure by Sideshow. That's this baby right here. Uh, all you gotta do is head to side.show slash win Magneto to enter for your chance to win. Uh, now let's get started. Here are Amy and Paul with the monthly comic book news wrap up. Amy and Paul, take it. Hey everyone, I'm Amy. And I'm Paul. And we're from the Comics Hall and we are bringing you the biggest comic book news from February 2020. Yes, it's a, it, it's been a big month. I mean, I think there's a lot of news that we really, uh, I mean, there are certain, there, there's a lot of news every week, but there's some news that we just had to absolutely wrap up. And this is the best of February. And they, they jam-packed it all into a very short month. So we yes. got a lot to cover for you guys. You want to take it away? Yeah, right up top. Dan DiDio has officially left uh, DC. He was with DC for about five years, uh, give or take. Uh, that leaves Jim Lee as the sole publisher for DC Comics. Um, you know, there was a lot of talk about the 5G, uh, the 5G event that uh, Dan DiDio had been writing. Um, it does seem that that event is still going to be taking place, but now the way that it's going to be taking place is supposed to be slightly different now. Uh, over, you know, C2E2 did just happen, and Jim Lee did say they have no plans right now to replace Dan DiDio. I mean, that's going to be hard to do. You can't just replace someone like Dan DiDio. Yeah, especially after he he kind of helped Shepard in the Rebirth event and, yeah. and all the recent years. And the, new this 50, is... the big New 52 event. Like, yes. he's been spearheading a lot of this stuff. So, I mean, with him out, I mean, I I, I was a big Dan DiDio fan, so it does it is sad to see him go, but I'm sure he's... <laughs> He's got stuff lined up. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's got, gonna be just fine. He's got prospects. Yeah. <laughs> um, February was a huge month for uh, comic books in television and film. Uh, just to name a few things, DC launched their Birds of Prey movie in theaters, uh, and Netflix premiered two new shows based on independent comic series. First, the supernatural horror series Lock and Key, which uh, was famously written by Joe Hill, who's mm -hmm. the son of Stephen King. Yes. Uh, and I Am Not Okay With This, which is a, a much less uh, well-known graphic yeah. novel, but it's a coming-of-age story about a young woman who's dealing with not only the trials of puberty, but also the fact that she's developing psychic powers like everybody does at that age. As you do, yeah. Uh, that series I heard, both of those series I heard uh, launched a great acclaim on Netflix. And um, we also got a couple of trailers and updates for movies that have been in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a new trailer for Bloodshot from uh, yes. Sony Pictures based on the Valiant Comics uh, super soldier who has nanites in his blood and he's, uh, Such he's a good series. his memory is being toyed with by the organization that brought him back to life. Um, so there has been a new trailer for that this month and it's opening in theaters on March 13th. And then finally, uh, the long-awaited Marvel Fox film, The New Mutants, <laughs> Finally, Finally has a release date, April Finally. 3rd, 2020. Uh, this one's been pushed back for a couple of years now. We, we've earned this film, I think. I think, think, I you think know, the, like I want to say the first trailer came out in 2017. The first it's, teaser for it. And I'm still convinced I'm going to buy my tickets. I'm going to walk in and just hope. I'm like, it's still happening, right? Yeah. Like, we're still going to, the, yeah. the movie's still going on? Up until the, the <laughs> yeah. previews stop, there's no guarantee that we're getting this movie on April 3rd. But yes. for all intents and purposes, all the marketing material does say now that the new mutants will be out on April 3rd. And it looks wonderful and terrifying, and I'm so excited. Yep. Um, also, we finally got a look at the new Batsuit. Um, not only just the Batsuit, but we got, you know, a couple more, uh, you know, teasers and as well as maybe where the direction of the new The Batman film by Matt Reeves is going. Uh, so on Matt Reeves' social channels, he did share almost like a really gritty uh, version of like what the Batsuit, it was, it was like a screen test, I believe. Yeah. It was a screen test. Um, and we got to see the Batsuit and I mean, there was a lot to say. There was a lot of folks who had a lot to say about uh, the Batsuit. I personally, I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. I mean, I love all the inspiration it draws from because the story is already very... Um, very loosely drawing from the the Jeff Loeb uh, comic, The Long Halloween. Mm -hmm. So it's already kind of set in that gritty, noir, like Batman is a detective story that I think a lot of big Batman fans have been clamoring for. Yeah. Um, and then also, but the suit itself uh, that we got to take a look at, I mean, it draws from lots of Batman comics, specifically like the emblem, you know, folks are saying that that's the- That was really cool. I've, I've, I've never seen something quite like that. I'm not a yes. Batman expert, but that was like a really unique take for film. Yeah, uh, Kevin Smith in the recent uh, 
uh, Detective Batman Detective Comics 1000 did a panel inside the large oversized issue where Batman goes to like think of it like a, like a a, a super villain superstore <laughs> and uh, <laughs> basically he buys back the under a, a fake name buys back the gun that killed his parents melts it down and puts it under his emblem so it's not quite the same but you can tell yeah. hopefully it was inspired um, we did get a look at the bat cycle too because quite a few days after um, we did see some set photos mm -hmm. and we did see uh, them filming in Glasgow uh, and you saw like the bat cycle which I think is, it looks really cool it's kind of draws from Scott Snyder's uh, zero year run okay. which uh, which was fantastic and it's kind of like Batman just kind of you know, uh, get his feet wet in he, you know in the bat suit basically because it's he's only really been Batman in the Batman Matt Reeves movie for about two years. Okay. So I mean, there's there's a lot there's a lot there, but uh, all that from a couple of photos. <laughs> all of that from a couple of photos. Uh, right now, um, Batman is set to premiere uh, sometime in 2021. Right now, it's tentatively set as June 25th, 2021. You know, we hope that it stays to that date because I'm super stoked. Yes. Clearly. <laughs> so as Paul mentioned, C2E2, which was the Chicago uh, entertainment and Comics Expo took place over the last weekend of the month, rolling into a little bit of mm -hmm. March, uh, but it's still February news. Um, and while DC was kind of withdrawing from some of their materials with the loss of Dan Didio, Marvel uh, mm -hmm. made a big showing of their uh, upcoming comic book events. They announced their new X-Men event for this summer that'll take place in July. It is called the Ten of Swords. It is stylized as an X, nice. but it's like the, uh, <laughs> the tarot card, the Ten of Swords. Um, the event is a 15-part X-Men line crossover, so it will involve uh, most of the X-Men titles that are out currently, and it is being shepherded by writers Jonathan Hickman and Teeny Howard. Teeny Howard is currently on Excalibur, so the fact that it's a right, sword yeah. book uh, may have something to do with that legendary sword. Um, beautiful promotional image by Mark Brooks was released oh, that features so dozens yeah. of X-Men characters all wielding different famous swords from throughout um, Marvel Comics, including Wolverine with the Muramasa blade. Uh, we've got the Soul Sword, we've got Excalibur itself, the and then... Cerebro Sword. Yeah. Which is completely new. Mutants are getting swords. We oh. thought their powers were crazy enough. The mutants are all getting swords, but we'll find out more about that Everyone this summer. Everyone needs a sword, I think. You should just have a sword. I don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. <laughs> uh, 15 parts does sound a little daunting, but I remember that uh, House of X Powers of 10 was 12 parts. Right, uh, yeah. and I And I loved every second And of there was that. not enough of it. Like, I would have wanted yeah. so much more of that book. Um, the announcement was also accompanied uh, with more updates about their their spring events, because we have to get through spring before we get to summer. <laughs> yes. um, they gave fans an update on Empire, which is their big cosmic event that's starting in April, and Outlawed, which is their event about uh, teenage hero heroes being mm -hmm. outlawed under Kamala's law, which has to do with Ms. Marvel. Mm -hmm. um, and all these, these teenage vigilantes are suddenly put under much higher scrutiny and made practically illegal. It's almost like a like a civil war but for the teens kind of right, deal. Right, right. And would, and I think um, if I remember if you please correct me <laughs> is uh out uh is it Champions spins right out of that, yes. right? And it's like cuz that is Marvel's premier teenage right. team right now. Yeah. So I'm really really stoked for that. Yeah. Be That'll be cool. It'll affect a lot of uh, books in their publishing line if people like the younger superheroes. And then finally their last big announcement from the weekend was that uh this summer Ta-Nehisi Coates's uh, four-year run on Black Panther will be finished, so he is working towards a finale right now. Um, he has greatly influenced. I mean, he took T'Challa to space and yes. made a Wakanda space empire, uh, but oh, that'll be really fantastic. cool. Uh, and it's nice that he's. it's an announced end of the series, not a surprise cancellation, right. so he is building up to his Black Panther finale. So that will be the end of his four-year story. Which is nice, because sometimes a lot of... Um a lot of creators, sometimes it's like, you know, either they get to finish and it's gone on too long or they get like the rug, you know, sort of from underneath them. And yeah. uh, it, it's nice to see like, this is a direction that I'm going and I'm gonna end the book. So I'm yeah. really, really excited and, for that. And four, run, uh, four years on any run is kind of unheard of nowadays. Yeah, it's, that's you fantastic. Get two years at, at the most, yeah. but that's really exciting. And then, so we did uh, kind of going uh, into that, we did have uh, in February, we got to see our May solicitations. Um, so uh, every comic book publisher released their solicitations for May of 2020. Uh, and it teases fans of what's coming up and big events, um, and maybe some books to keep an eye on. Uh, I know uh, for DC, they are launching their Dark Knight's Death Metal uh, number one, which is a six issue, I guess it's a, a sequel follow-up to the massively successful uh, Dark Knight's Metal series that Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo had done for uh, DC, which I personally loved. I'm really, really stoked for this. I'm really, really stoked that this is going to be like very Trinity-centric mm -hmm. as well, with an emphasis on Wonder Woman. Who, oh, I didn't um, know that. Because uh, there are some, I won't spoil too much on the show here, <laughs> um, but there is uh, 
some events that spin out of uh, Scott Snyder's current uh, Justice League run that leads very cohesively into Dark Knight's uh, heavy d- death metal. Death I'm metal. sorry, death metal into you death know, metal. Heavy metal could be their third follow up. I'm wait. I'm, I'm I'm ready for it. Yeah, heavy metal is with all of the books that I've collected <laughs> from all of their runs. That's yep. what the there it is. That's what the long box is called. And yeah, so um, that is uh, an event that is definitely to keep an eye on. It's gonna be you're gonna see it everywhere in all of your local comic shops. Um, also, Batman the Animated Adventure is gonna be followed up in a comic. That's going to be absolutely incredible. I'm yeah. really, really, really excited for that. I mean, and then Green Lantern uh, is getting a 100-page, 80-year celebration special, which I will be picking up as soon as possible. And that one has tons of, of Green Lantern grades so many for the writers and the yeah. artists, so it's going to be kind of like an all-star special for oh, them. Yeah. Um, Marvel, as I mentioned, their, their Empire event is launching this April, so May is a continuation of that event. They don't have any massive launches, um, but there will be a bunch of characters joining the fight, like Captain America, the X-Men, and Thor will all get their own mini-series that are tied into mm-hmm. the event. Um, Juggernaut is also getting a new five-issue series, um, and the Dawn of X will continue with Children of the Atom, Hellions, and X Factor, um, which all launched the month prior, but this is a continuation of their X-Men books that will be building into that Ten of Swords event. Um, Image Comics also has one particular new launch uh, for May. It is a series by Stephanie Phillips and Craig Cermak called A Man Among Ye, and it's actually based on uh, the pirates (laughs) Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed uh, seeking treasure on the high seas. So it's it's a fictitious account of of lady pirates and so that'll be pretty cool to see yeah dark horse is also releasing um they're collecting a which again is something i was not as familiar with but when um i kind of look more into it, it sounds incredibly fascinating it is uh black sad the collected series volume one celebrating 20 years of the french feline uh detective comics that is uh it's won a ton of awards i mean it's it almost makes me feel so bad that I didn't. It wasn't on my radar a lot earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a lot of these uh, these comics, as great as they were, they were geared towards the French audience. Yeah, it was uh, created by two Spanish right. uh, comic book creators, but for the French market. Um, and the cool thing about the Dark Horse collection, if I may, uh, is that this collection will feature material that has never been published in English oh, before. Wow. Um, so fans of the series or the character will be able to get uh, their hands on some brand new Black Sad stories. Oh, yeah. um, the character's also being featured in a video game that's coming out this year. Um, ki- kind of like L.A. Noir meets Zootopia, <laughs> if, I, if I may pitch the series very poorly. Um, but Black sold. Sad yeah. is definitely worth a look. Um, IDW is launching a few new series. Yeah, the, some the, good cre- books. the creator owned series is. Mm-hmm. Um, we try to keep a look at the, the yeah. new number ones rather than what's continuing. Um, they're launching a supernatural western called Change to the Grave and a new adventure mystery series called Bermuda. I'll give you three guesses about what famous <laughs> uh, location in the world that's about. Um, but Vegas. <laughs> it's not Vegas. You're, you're close. Um, <laughs> A lot, of things, a lot of things disappear <laughs> in Vegas, too. Um, but these publishers, there's so many more publishers out in the market, but everybody released their yeah. solicitations. Um, so you can check your favorite publisher's social media to find their full list of books that are coming out in May that you can then go to your comic book store and pre-order. Yes. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's really, really exciting, guys. Uh, we love solicitations because we get to kind of a peek behind the, the veil there. So not only was uh, has February been incredibly short, but we did get a whole lot of news in there. Everything from uh, Dan DiDio, uh, unfortunately leaving DC, uh, February with with all of the television and, and stuff that we got on, mm-hmm. you know, from going from comic to uh, television. We also have quite a few uh, things to now peek at as far as the new Batman film goes. Uh, and then comics galore, of course, which is why we're here. Yes. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. You guys can catch our full show every single Wednesday where we go over uh, all of the new releases for that particular week. Um, You can catch us on YouTube. You can catch us on the Sideshow Facebook page and coming soon as a podcast. Yep. I'm Amy. And I'm Paul. And that was the Comics Hall. Enjoy the rest of your show, guys. Bye, guys. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Now, as promised, Joining Amy and myself is sideshow painter extraordinaire Bernardo Esquivel. Bernardo, how you doing? Great, thank you for having me here. I'm so excited to have you here. Oh man, uh, we've been wi- I've been chomping at the bit to get you on here. 
Now, you were recently featured in a behind the scenes video showcasing the painting of Superman Call to Action. Uh, some of our fans have some pretty important questions about you and your work, so I would like to jump right in if that's possible. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Okay, uh, first thing I need to know is I want to know more about you mm -hmm. because I like you and I want to know these things. <laughs> that's Tell true. me more. Uh, how did you get to the sideshow? How did you come here? How long have you been here? I've been here, what, 15 years, I would say? Wow. Yeah. And how did you get, how did you land at Sideshow? I don't remember. No, I was doing freelance work. I remember I had a friend that I was working at one time and they were just going to pick up the license for Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he was like, I, I want to bring you on board. I want you to bring you on board. And, um, you know, went through the rings of fire, as you would say, through the mm -hmm. interview process and whatnot. But, it, you know, it took a bit to get in, you know, because they're very like, okay, let's see where we're going with this still and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I got the interview with Tom and I've known Tom for a long time, you know, mentor yeah. of mine as well. And yeah, it started from there 15 years ago. And just kind of rolled with it. And then, Oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah. Now... Star Wars is like my jam. Right? Is that? Are oh, you yeah. a big Star Wars fan? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's your, what's your, OG, who's your favorite? Original trilogy. Your, who's your favorite character? Hmm. You know what? I would say Stormtroopers. Yeah. Reason. Just yeah. the general generic concept. Stormtroopers and X-Wing pilots. Yeah. So you're, you're a soldier guy. I guess, yeah. I yeah? Say, yeah. No, they like, were just cool, right? They did look really cool. Yeah, I do agree with you the on opening that Opening scene, you know. Yeah. Interesting. And that was my main question was who you were into. Now, follow up from that because we got a lot of really cool questions um, from fans. Mm -hmm. Some of them, I can tell, are, are art fans. Some of them are sideshow fans. Mm -hmm. Some of them are professional artists themselves. Uh, and so they have some questions. And in some of these, I might need you to clarify some answers. Sure. Uh, because I don't even know some of these words. For example, the first one we got, does most of your budget go into buying citizens? Citadel paints. No, um, that's one of the one of the paints. One of the brands I use. Okay, I use many for you know, in, in that line I might use certain colors or washes. Again, um, something that will just put on top of a base coat or whatever to give it some depth and whatnot. But I'll use any, anywhere from Minotaur um, airbrush paints to Goldens, uh, Vallejos. Yeah, I just use all kinds of paints just to get the look I need. Because okay. sometimes certain brands have more colors than others or certain um, washes that I like to use from other companies. So Is it all airbrush that you do? No, no, no. Um, not, no, ha hand brush as well. Okay. The, with the washes, it would be, we would apply it with the brush. Oh. So a lot of, a lot of the base coating would be airbrush, a lot of fine line work and stuff like, like um, detail work sometimes. We'll mask and we'll do, to get a nice smooth finish, we use the airbrush. Oh. And then after that, we'll go in with the brush and do washes and. I love how much I'm learning right now about this. Oh, that's I'm, good. I'm like writing <laughs> notes for myself. Um, now, what do you uh, use to cut the paint with and to make the wash itself? Uh, most of the time, water. Yeah? Yeah, a little bit of water. And sometimes a little bit of uh, denatured alcohol as well um, in the airbrush when we're going to airbrush it on there. So just to break it up better. Um, so now, uh, so you, you mentioned what kind of paint um, that you use. And you use airbrushing as well as mm -hmm. uh, brush painting. Mm -hmm. um, Here's another question that I'm I'm hoping that I can use my context clues to figure out. But what do you clear it with? Clear with uh, you mean at, at, at the process? I don't mean anything. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I was given this question. Oh, uh, what do I clear with? With you? Oh, clear. Oh, the words I said. Yeah. Uh, so clear. Yeah. So, so it's depending on what finish you want. But most of the time, when we're first starting out until we get to the end, like oh, I want this boot to look. I don't want it to look dirty or, or weathered. I want it to look kind of maybe a little new. So, that, so I use a satin. You use a satin mm -hmm. for that. And then... And we'll use different finishes for, you know, to break up the piece. So... Because a lot of times it'll just look... So if you were doing a Stormtrooper, you'd do like a satin finish? Mm -hmm. And then if you're doing an X-Wing pilot, you would do matte? Probably a flat. Yeah, a like flat. a matte. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm getting it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can be a painter now. So for a, for instance, a Stormtrooper, <laughs> everyone thinks, oh, they're super glossy. Well, they're really not. So I would go in with a satin and then go in maybe after with the boots, do like a, a flat, like a mat. I guess, so it looks like leather boots, you know? So, I guess it would worn, weathered. I guess it would depend on where they are. Mm -hmm. If they were on Tatooine. Sand Troopers. Uh, a favorite. Sand Trooper. Mm -hmm. uh, then it would be much more weathered. But if they were on, say, the Death Star, they might have that very mm -hmm. glossy shine because mm -hmm. it's sort of like their, their mm -hmm. dress uniform. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. I think I'm getting you now. All right. Good. <laughs> I hope um, I'm making myself clear. Uh, another question uh, was, could you please tell me what you put in your washes and what ratios they're in? People want to know your trade secrets. You know, I really just go by eye and by feel. 
There's really? no ratios. I don't measure anything. So there's no real math to it so much. It's no. just you have to kind of trial and error mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, have you ever considered making your own videos specifically on painting figures so that you can show all of your own little tips and tricks that you've learned, uh, the things that are sort of second nature to you, um, but sort of they're a fountain of knowledge for somebody that might not mm -hmm. have that information, somebody that's uh, never sort of learned the things that you learned but would like to, or is that something that you feel artists should have to develop sort of on their own? I've never thought of doing a video, only really? because I don't like, like, it was hard for me to do that video. I mean, they had to pull my teeth, basically. I was like, Oh, we know uh, how hard it was to get you here. <laughs> yes, I know. And, 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 and doing this as well. But, um, you know, uh, that would be fun. I, I'd love to do that. Um, it's just weird because uh, it took me, it took years for me to, I mean, trial and error. That's, for yeah. me, it was practice, practice, practice. You know, and hearing from others, nah, do this, do that, or no, 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 hey, try this, or, so, you know, from Tom and Anthony, Anthony Messes, another mentor of mine who um, worked in the paint department, who's now project manager, but great artist, man, a yeah. good friend, you know, both of them. Um, and I still learn. I'm still learning. We're, as, as a matter of fact, I learn from everybody in the paint room. Yeah. We're always vibing off each other. So for me, I would love to um, do that. But for me, it would be like I'm, 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 everything I do is learning from everybody else as well. Yeah, there's solid vibes in that paint room, too. You guys oh, uh, yeah. really get along. Um, now, from the same uh, 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 person that asked that question, they said, have you ever thought about writing and then publishing a book, maybe on Kickstarter or something, uh, as I'm sure it would be a complete success and highly sought after. Oh, wow, that was, that's a very so nice So that, that person is a fan of yours. Well, thank you so much. Would for you? That. Would, would maybe, you ever? Maybe I might consider doing that. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's such a cool and unique skill that you have. Yeah. Um, that maybe maybe doing that maybe it might be a yeah good I, I I never think about it as work it's just something I love to do as a kid you know from a kid painting and oh you worked at such when you were a kid <laughs> as yeah. a kid grow yeah We've been here, mm -hmm. I've been here yeah, a long it's been time a while, yeah. yeah I didn't get paid it was but... fifteen yeah you're only twenty <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're great thank you twenty two uh, um, now you said you're a big Star Wars that Star Wars is your jam mm -hmm. so what is your dream Star Wars piece to paint and why. Like what would be your your All grail? <laughs> my my grail actually would probably be Luke and X Wing pilot gear. We haven't really? done one. All right, well, a very stoic. Now pose, we know what to do. You know? Okay, call them up. Call up the big office. We know what we're doing now. A very stoic, maybe like holding on to the ladder. Maybe or to get yeah, on to the X Wing. Yeah, maybe? I think something like that. He just he has all this gear on. Why not just show it? Have him just standing there with his helmet on. Or that off. would be a great. Do two piece. portraits. Helmeted, non-helmeted, so it's the scale, you Exclusive know? Exclusive in a collector's edition. Mm -hmm. We got it right there. Oh, my God. Maybe Rebel Fleet Trooper, maybe a Greedo quarter scale. Really? Well, it's... We now I'm going start. down the list I'm of, like, like yeah, everything. In the yeah. cantina. How about a, how about a Wooher behind mm -hmm. the cantina bar? Mm -hmm. And then we could do Trinto Duaba. That was a character in the background. Mm -hmm. That's okay. clarifying. Not announcements. <laughs> not ab yes. I've been told these, these are, are not This is a wish list. <laughs> these are wish list things, because that's exactly what the question was in the first place, so... Don't hold your breath for it. Yeah. Uh, now, for things you have done, mm -hmm. what would be uh, the piece that you consider a favorite or your most satisfied piece? Uh, I would say Obi-Wan Mythos. Oh, you did that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I understand why you like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's everybody's favorite piece. And then, yeah, and then after that, really, I would say the Macquarie line pieces. Oh, my. I love that line, too. Yeah, I love that you did the Vader those. and the troop uh, stormtrooper. Oh man, just because seeing those images as a kid, right, and like, the concept art that Macquarie did to to bring that to life is pretty cool. I had a book of postcards mm -hmm. that were just Macquarie art, yeah. and I used to just flip through them and stare. And mm -hmm. so when I've seen those statues as we walk through the halls of sideshow, I am blown away by how cool they are. That's yeah. so great. Yeah, that's a dream come true to get to work on. Oh that. yeah, for sure. Um, do you have a favorite part of the painting process uh, itself? Um. I would say, you know, the first part of it is always your base coating. You're going to see where you're going to go with it. Then we start doing the detail work. That's where it's fun. Like, that's where I get gratification. You start seeing it come to life. So it's either doing portraits and seeing that, you know, skin tone or whoever you're trying to, to get across to, you know, especially if it's a, if a, if it's a, a, an actor or someone you're trying to portray, you need to get that across the board, right? So you need to make it look like them. Any, any, anyone else like Superman, that's not just a generic character, like mm -hmm. anyone else's okay but 
getting that across the board, like that's challenging, you know, and weathering, like weathering a base, uh, metallics and all that, or metal, like uh, just uh, rubble and stuff like that. That's yeah. challenging as well because to get it to look real is challenging. You know, you can paint it and just put paint, slather paint on it, but breaking it up and making it look realistic is another. That's one of the really, things I love to do. That's is is that and yeah. reference. I'm always taking pictures everywhere I go of anything. Really, rest of trucks or brick. I'm so happy that you didn't just say uh, the end of painting is my favorite part. I'm so glad that you get to take delight in sort of continuing to move forward. Yeah, uh, the fact that I'm, you know, the pressure of getting the the project done too at the same time and and vibing off that and it's pretty cool. Do you have a, a favorite sideshow piece? Maybe that one, one that you didn't work on or anything like do you, is there a piece that you just, that you might have and it's like your your centerpiece, your cornerstone of your collection or uh, just one piece that you marvel at? Hmm. Um, one piece that I have that, uh, I like, you know what? I like all of them, seriously. Really? Yeah. Wow, what a cop-out answer. Yeah. How, how dare you? Because there's so many. There I are. There really are. No, I, I, I understand. There's. Uh, I have a hard time trying to pick. That, uh, that Obi-Wan mythos might be mine. So I'm really stoked that you uh, oh, got to work on that. Um, start to finish paint-wise, how long does it take to complete a piece? It takes about, uh, well, for the project, three to four weeks, right? But for... Uh, you know, maybe a week and a half, I would say. Really? Yeah, I mean, there's two, we gotta paint two pieces. Yes. So it depends, it could be, let's say for instance, uh, cable, mm -hmm. huge piece, a bunch of parts, yeah. like a bazillion parts, that took forever because we're doing the prototype and then we gotta do the paint master. So then we gotta paint, you know, all the little grenades, all the pouches and put it on him and make sure that the light. So how long did that piece take? Maybe four weeks. I would say maybe a little So four bit. weeks of, of, of what is essentially what I'm, I'm guessing, uh, we'll just say an eight hour day, five days mm -hmm. a week for a month. Wow. Of just working on cable. Do you feel uh, like a separation anxiety whenever you hand the pieces over? No, it's more like, here you go. You're like, <laughs> Au revoir. Yay, you're like thank done. you. Yeah. Um, what's the most difficult piece you've ever done? Was it that cable? I think so. Yeah. Just to get everything right. Because it was it was such an icon right, everyone was waiting for cable. So no pressure, right? <laughs> no, there was I was, oh man, I gotta get this right. Make sure you know, because I may not might might be a fan of cable, but I'll put 120% to, you know, challenge myself as well and give what the the fans want as well, you know, because we want it to be right. So we're reference and going over reference and design work and oh let's do this, let's do that. So it's it's very cool. It's a collaborative Work. That's what's so fun about this job, you know, is, is the people you work with as well. So getting that piece done and coming out the way it came out, you know, I mean, it was fun. It was great to see that come to life. This has been such an amazing show and I am so excited. Thank you so much, uh, Bernardo, for coming here. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for uh, I love talking to you. I love hearing from you. I love learning about your process. Thank you so much to Amy and Paul from the Comics Hall for giving us that news, as well as our wonderful guest today, Bernie. Uh, thank you to my amazing co-host, Amy, and you. Thank you, that's right, because you have been an amazing audience, so thank you for joining us today. Now make sure you head to side.show slash L-Y-G-S-S and join the Facebook group. Not only is it a great community, but they have their very own studio and they go live every day. And sometimes you can win stuff like print proofs and figures. So you're going to want to go and check that out. Uh, thank you all so much again for joining us. Thank you to my guests. And don't forget to let your geek side show. Hey, did you like that video? Be sure to subscribe by clicking the S icon on your screen and click that bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under product info. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to let your geek side show.